Imagine two groups of kids, one playing football and the other playing chess. Which group do you think has more artistic kids in it? So if you're familiar with the common difficulties associated with autism, then you might lean toward the chess group, and you'll probably be correct. Evidence from across the world shows that individuals with autism are uniquely drawn to chess. This connection is so significant that the International Chess Federation has even launched a new program to teach chess to autistic kids, harnessing the game's potential to empower them. Let's take a moment to talk about autism. Autism is a condition related to the development of the brain that affects around 1% of children globally. For some subtypes, the genetic causes had been identified, while for others, the exact causes remain unclear. Signs of autism often emerge during early infancy, with the main characteristics including challenges in social interaction, such as reduced eye contact, and repetitive behaviors, which can range from specific rituals to restricted interests. But today, I want to shift the narrative. Instead of focusing on the challenges, let's instead explore the benefits and advantages that autism may bring. Since I started playing chess 23 years ago, I quickly realized that kids in my chess class were very different than those at school. As I progressed in my chess journey and earned the title of international master, I kept on wondering, what is it about chess that makes it such a natural fit for kids with autism? This question has stayed with me throughout the years, inspiring a deeper curiosity about the connection between chess and autism. So one of the key characteristics of autism is heightened sensitivity to noise. Now, if you've ever been to a chess tournament, you probably realized how quiet it is. Imagine being in a room with a thousand eight-year-olds and still being able to hear your own breathing. It's quite surreal, but it speaks to the unique environment the chess creates, one that is particularly accommodating for kids with autism. Another advantage is that chess is a truly solo game. Research shows that people with autism often have difficulties in interpreting the emotions of others. While in team sports like football, this could lead to misunderstandings or even conflicts, in chess, those social skills aren't as critical, allowing players to focus entirely on their game. Now, what about the game itself? Chess is unique because there is no randomness or subjectivity involved. In game theory, for example, they call it a perfect information game. That means each player knows exactly what happened on the board up to that moment, and nothing is hidden. Now, compare that to a game like poker, where you're constantly trying to infer the true state of the game by interpreting your opponent's actions. This skill, called theory of mind, is about understanding and predicting what others are thinking. It's a skill that people with autism often have difficulties with, but in chess, it's much less needed. As I became a cognitive scientist, I looked for a deeper reason behind the remarkable number of autistic chess colleagues that I had. Two years ago, I came across an article by Dr. Liron Rosenkant titled Enhanced Rationality in Autism. This paper outlined several advantages that people with autism have in judgment and decision-making, such as a more deliberative thinking style and reduced cognitive biases, like the sunk cost policy. So I was intrigued and reached out to Liron, and together, under the supervision of my PhD supervisor, Professor Nitzan Shachar, we initiated a collaborative research project. So we wanted to explore whether individuals with autism will exhibit outcome-irrelevant learning, which is the decision-making bias that I'm focusing on in my PhD. Let me give you an example to explain what it is. Imagine seeing two apples on a table, one green and one red. Now let's say you decided you want to eat the red apple which happened to be on the right, and it turned out to be tastier than you expected. When this happens, your brain uses this signal where the outcomes exceeds expectations to update its preferences. Naturally, this would lead you to like red apples more in the future. But here's the twist. It does not stop there. We found that people also update their preferences for irrelevant things, like the location, in this case, the right side of the table. 
people do that even though they know there is no logical connection between the location and the taste. This tendency is entirely implicit, meaning that people are doing it without even knowing that it's happening. This pattern has replicated in multiple studies, including thousands of participants from around the globe. So here, we set out to test whether individuals with autism would show this bias as well. We recruited individuals who identified as autistic and verified their official diagnosis. We then let them complete our decision-making task. And guess what we found? People with autism don't show outcome-irrelevant learning whatsoever. That means they are able to focus on the relevant information without letting irrelevant information influencing their decision-making. But that's not all. Even in the control group composed of non-autistic individuals, the more autistic traits someone reported, the less likely they were to exhibit outcome-irrelevant learning. This highlights a fascinating link between autistic traits and more rational decision-making. So what's going on here? It seems that people with autism have a remarkable ability to quickly zero in on the relevant information, completely ignoring the irrelevant details like the locations. This allows them to make more accurate decisions in our task, which in turn translates into greater monetary bonuses. Their ability to filter out distractions gives them a clear advantage in this context. However, the ability to focus exclusively only on what is currently relevant for the current choice can be a double-edged cognitive sword. We recently found that while in stable environments, completely ignoring outcome-irrelevant information leads to better performance, it can actually become a disadvantage in environments that change unexpectedly. Keeping a small degree of attention on irrelevant details can allow individuals to more quickly adapt if the rules of the game suddenly shift. This adaptability, driven by seemingly irrelevant cues, is crucial in unpredictable situations. To sum up, the autistic cognitive style appears to offer an advantage in static learning environments. In our task, individuals with autism were better able to filter out the irrelevant information allowing them to focus entirely only on what matters. This is particularly beneficial in stable settings such as chess. However, this same strength can pose a challenge in more dynamic environments like the social world, where the need to flexibly adapt to changing information is key. So this finding goes beyond simply explaining why people with autism excel at chess. It highlights the importance of recognizing the strengths and weaknesses unique to each person, rather than just tagging them as abnormal. By embracing this diversity, we can foster greater well-being and self-determination for individuals. This perspective is already being applied in very practical ways. For example, recruitment companies are actively seeking to hire autistic people to quality assurance roles recognizing their excellent attention to detail and fit to such work. Ultimately, this approach enriches not only those with autism, but also our society as a whole. Thank you for listening.